Well, here we are. We're here on a beautiful Sunday in which I don't, I don't know. It's pretty hot outside, so let's stay inside. Um, we got some lacrosse to talk about today, and let's talk the PLL first. Um, you see the standings, you see the scores. PLL went to Baltimore to honor the under 11, under 13 kids, and the Hall of Fame class, and, you know, everything like that. Um, the throwback mesh jerseys were in Denver, and those should be a thing all the time. You know, had a couple ABC games out in Baltimore. Had a messed up ESPN Plus stream during the Cannons Redwoods game. And even though there was nothing on ESPN2 after the Atlas Dogs, we're talking, you know, ESPN's filled up with stuff. ABC, obviously, it's a Saturday night. And ABC just doesn't want to show anything. So, uh, yeah, uh, and ESPU's showing, like, college, um, not college, Little League Baseball. And ESPN News is literally just a filler thing now. And that's not part of the deal. So, naturally, you'd think... Oh, well, we have a PLL After Dark doubleheader. You know, just air something in between the two games and, you know, it'd be all right. No. No. <laughs> and it honestly, when you look at it, it it's kind of, it, it's been a, you know, a lot of things this year wrong with the PLL. I mean, my goodness. It, it's been rough, and that, that just kind of... That just kind of, you know, messed things up a lot. I mean, my goodness, man. How, do you, how does an ESPN Plus stream mess up like that? It, it's bad. You know what I mean? Man. You know, most of the playoff spots have been clinched. You see the top four right now. That could be our championship series that I'm not going to watch in 2024. I'm not going to watch that nonsense. Sixes. Um. There was even a trade this week that, you know, apparently was supposed to raise the roof. But honestly, it's two guys that haven't done anything this year. Romar Dennis, he's going to the Redwoods. And he basically, he I think he maybe he did something. I don't know. Atlas gets Miles Jones. But again, both these guys have just been non-existent this year in a league where it, it's still, you know, it's still... There's still a lot of stuff to be determined. And, I mean, when you have a playoff spot coming down to two teams that are absolutely terrible, I mean, the Atlas, Trevor Baptiste is carrying this team on his back. You know, yeah, yeah, you can say uh, stuff about Teat, Law, Gray, you know, that trio. But, I mean... Baptiste is winning faceoffs at a crazy rate, and teams aren't dressing faceoff guys now. So, and, and, and the Atlas still lose, and then the transition defense is bad. I mean, just just is just so much going wrong. And then the Chrome are even worse. They got smacked two straight weeks. Archers by eight, they, and then Whip Snakes by by seven. I mean, awful. Awful, awful team. I don't know how the Redwoods are 4-4 four four with a negative 14 score differential. I don't know how, but it is what it is. I, I really I really don't know. They, they've gotten it together, though, the past couple weeks. Chaos are 4-4, four four, Whips 4-4, four four, Dogs 5-3, and three, Cannons 5-3, and, and the Archers sitting at the top at 7-1. So two weeks left in the PLL season before the playoffs. Basically, the playoffs are pretty much set as far as the teams. It's just the order, and the order, Archers might be the number one seed, and that 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 may say a lot, but really, really fun Archers team, you know. So the NLL, um, let's talk about the Eastern Conference first, the free agency tracker. There may have been something today that I did not know about, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, New York, uh, we'll talk about them a little bit more in a moment. Um, John LaFontaine, JT Giles Harris, uh, some, some of the key signings there. Lyle Thompson stays in Georgia. I, I think Georgia signed some other guys as well. 
but the big one is Lyle Thompson. And then, you know, Toronto solidifying their pretty strong roster in which Dan Craig's back, you know, um, Bill Hostrauser, Nick Rose, you know, just a really good roster for the Rock. And then Andrew Suter, he's hired by Halifax as a defensive coach. Buffalo signing more guys, you know, they were kind of quiet for a couple weeks after winning the championship. But when you have guys like Adam Bomberry come back, Nick Weiss, Matt Vink, who's on basically a it's it says two year deal, but it but he said but he said himself it's kind of on a year to year basis for that deal. Like he's going to play this season, but next season he may or he may not. Um Rochester, I don't know how they got Ethan O'Connor, but they got him. And then they got some other good signings as well. And in Philadelphia, watch out for that name, Deacon Knott. He's playing in Canada right now. So there's that. And in the West, um, not too much really from the West. San Diego kind of solidifies their guys. Eli Gobridge, um, Kai Rubish, Trey LeClaire, he's going to stay for two years. Um, and then Colorado, Eli McLaughlin, you know, um, Joey Capito in Colorado trying to come back to be a contender that will stay the whole way, you know, after after losing, you know, this past season in the um, in the NLL finals, you know, gonna be tough, gonna be real tough for the Mammoth, um, Panther City. They got some guys like Liam Osborne, Jackson Brown, Cole Pickup. And, I mean, that's all fun and good and stuff like that. But, you know, Panther City really didn't make a splash like some of these other teams have, like Saskatchewan. Um, Las Vegas was kind of quiet as well for, like, a couple weeks. Like, they got Adrian Sorchetti for three years, both Colin and TJ Curse. When you get two Curse, that's that's definitely a recipe for something. Um, Jack Hanna, Dylan Watson, just a solid roster, solid team. That the Desert Dogs can build around. And then Calgary, um, Josh Courier, he's going to stick around. And then Josh Sanderson, he's the new head coach, out in Calgary for the Roughnecks. And then Saskatchewan, they signed some more guys, um, like before I made that last video. And then they signed some guys after. And they signed some guys, you know, in between, like, you know, like Keegan Bell, um, Bobby Kidd III, Holden Garland. Some of these guys were indeed traded. Like, I think Panther City made a trade, but it is what it is there. And then the trades were probably the biggest thing. The biggest thing, I know Connor Farrell, he's going to go to Rochester, but, you know, the biggest thing was the San Diego, New York, Philadelphia trade in which all three parties got something out of it. San Diego trades a few draft picks to Philly. Mike McCann, they trade Mike McCannell and another draft pick to New York. New York sends a draft pick to San Diego, and then they send Scott Dominey to Philadelphia, which is, oh, oh my. Uh, Kiel Matisse, Matt Addison, they're going from Philly to New York, and then the big one, Trevor Baptiste, Kyle Jackson from Philly all the way out west to San Diego, and I think San Diego got probably the best part of this deal. Uh, all three teams kind of won in a way, but San Diego is probably the biggest winner for getting Baptiste. He, he will dominate out west. Have you seen what he's done for the Atlas this year? Over 75% face-off wins. He's got a couple goals as well, a lot of ground balls. Gonna be, gonna be wild to see him out west so in any case the WLA finals they are indeed set oops the major league the major series lacrosse finals are also set but going back to the WLA real quick before we talk about you know the MSL so it'll be new Westminster and Langley yeah kind of a predictable matchup but it is what it is. So August 16th, 
that's in a couple of days. That's like a Wednesday, I think. That will be game one. Then game seven, if need be, will be August the 29th. Remember, um, it's a one, 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 one rotation. So, you know, not a two, three, two or or a two, two, one, one, one or anything like that. So is what it is there. Um, the WLA Coway BP Hayden Dixon, you're going to have to watch out for him from the Westminster. Zach Higgins, he's most likely going to be the goalie. There are other goalies for the Salmon Bellies, but that will be the guy for, you know, that will be the guy from New Westminster. And then some other guys you need to look out for, Mitch Jones, Jordan McBride, you know, for the Salmon Bellies. Um, honestly, with Dixon leading the league in points like this, I mean, you know, he's just, uh, he's got a lot of support around him. So we'll see. And then Langley, of course, you know, Robert Church, who leads the team in points. And then, of course, the boys, Nane Doby, Curtis Dixon, Frank Shigliano, goalie of the year. And, I mean, this is going to be one hell of a series. Too bad I think it's behind a paywall, though. So that's the bad part. Um, in the MSL, this is kind of a predictable matchup, um, you know. Six Nations took down Brooklyn in five. Peterborough, uh, no, wait, no, I messed up. <laughs> Six Nations, you know, law, like beat Coburg like four to one, and they and then Peterborough swept Brooklyn. So, yeah, real tough, real tough road, guys, real tough road. So, you know, in any case. Game one of the MSL finals will be August the 15th. And then again, you know, one game, you know, rotation. So, you know, every every uh, every game will have a different home arena. It'll flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until August 29th, if need be. Now, at least three games will be on YouTube Live, so that's good. So for Peterborough, you need to watch for Holden Katoni, who leads the who leads the MSL in points, and then you know other guys, Keel Matisse, like Laughlin, Josh Courier. I mean, just stacked Peterborough roster. But Six Nations is also stacked with Warren Hill emerging as the goalie that kind of helped Six Nations stay where they are. You know, at the top. Remember, they won. You know, they technically won the regular season. They had the most wins and everything like that. And then, of course, you know, Lyle Thompson and the Stotts brothers, Austin and Randy. I mean, what else can you say about this matchup? It's a matchup that we've seen in the MSL, like maybe like six of the past seven years or something like that. So, yeah, big time matchup there. So the Man Cup is ever so closer. So it will be either Six Nations, Peterborough, New Westminster, or Langley. And, you know, maybe maybe we get a rematch from last year of Peterborough and Langley. Maybe we get something new. We'll see. Um, the Minto, it's set. Um, the British Columbia champion is the is the Adnax of Coco Lamb, uh, the junior um, Adnax team anyway. Uh, so they are the champions of BC, um, the RMLL, um, the Rocky Mountain Cross League reps, the champs, the Edmonton Miners, who will host, and the Calgary Mountaineers, who run up, and the OJLL. Um, surprisingly, the Orangeville Northmen did not beat the Burley Debray. Blaze in, you know, easy fashion. In fact, Orangeville lost, you know, games before their matchup against Burlington, and they ultimately ended up losing this series in five or six games. I think it was six. Yeah, it was six games. Um, so the Mento Cup will be from August 20th to the 28th. HNL Live will televise the Mento all the way through, and I believe you'll have to pay for it. I cannot pay for it because I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't afford that. I can't afford to 
watch all that. Um, so yeah, really realistically, um, right now all I see is you know um, the game's going through the twenty seventh. So maybe that was a misnomer. It was kind of fluctuating as far as like the date for the final game, but I believe it'll be the twentieth through the twenty seventh. So you know, um, so there's the round robin, the elimination semi will be on the 23rd so the 20th through the 22nd will be the first will be the um the round robin games then the elimination game and then the finals so whoever wins the most in the in the um round robin will go on to be the one in the final and then you know, the finals will go three consecutive days, the 25th, 26th, and 27th. So, Minto, it's here. Cannot wait for it. Cannot wait to tell you who won it all. Hopefully, there's, like, highlights and stuff like that along the way and everything. And then Athletes Unlimited has ended um, some other some other talented gals that became captains, Kelly Glenn, Abby Bosco. But ultimately, it came down to the final game between Sam Apuzo, Taylor Moreno, and although Apuzo's team won 11-5 in this game today, just short is Miss Apuzo. Um, so congratulations to Taylor Moreno. I believe that's her second Athletes Unlimited title. So congratulations to her, and congratulations to all those that played this year in Athletes Unlimited, I know things kind of got off to a weird start, you know, but ultimately things ended up very, very well for Athletes Unlimited as far as like I really didn't hear too much. You know, I mean, it was a weird, it was weird. I didn't hear too much about Athletes Unlimited at all, you know, to start the year. But ultimately, that's how that ends. And that's how this video is going to end. So PLL in an interesting position, you know, as we come up towards the end of August and the PLL playoffs, the Man Cup is down to the Final Four. The Mentos Final Four is set. And, yeah, I know the Founders Cup and the President's Cup, you know, too, but I, I, I've decided not to cover those at all. And then the NLL free agency has just been insane. Man, how do we all? How do we do it all? I, I don't even know how I got all that. I don't even know how I tracked all the guys from free agency. It was a long, long night last night. I'll tell you that much. Tracking free agency. So, in any case, that'll do it from here. Um, of course, if you didn't see last night, uh, last this week in indoor football, last night for the twenty twenty three season, make sure you look at that. I'll be back on Tuesday, probably late. It's going to depend on a lot of things, but I'll be back on Tuesday. And depending on when the Man Cup is set, that is probably going to be when we come back to you talking lacrosse. So it'll probably be like August the 29th. No, not the 29th. Probably the 30th. It will either be the 27th, the 28th, or the 30th is when I'm thinking we'll, you know, rock again talking some lacrosse. Because, man, it, it's going to be one hell of a ride to get to September, to get to the Man Cup, and to get to the PLL Championship, man. So that'll do it from here. Um, I'll take care. I'll see you all um, on Tuesday.